Greetings, everybody out there. Lawrence Sandler here from Cockpit 3D, 3D Crystal. Uh, I welcome Mr. Riaz with us for our uh, behind the scenes session today. And uh, I thought today's session, uh, I'd ask a question to you that, that I keep getting. I, I'm seeing on chats, uh, I'm, I'm seeing on YouTube comments. And that is, you know, for, for, the, for the laser operator out there uh, who uh, wants to use our Cockpit 3D software on their side, uh, then there's the option of a 3D camera, which we also offer. You know, what are the pros and cons? Is one complementary to the other? Does one replace the other? It's kind of like peanut butter and jam, and I want both. Can, can you kind of speak to that? Uh, so that's uh, a fair question. Um, what I would say is, is that you need to understand what the ideal scenario is for using a 3D camera, because there's a very clear difference, okay? Um, 3D cameras are used because they are very quick to capture 3D data. So if you're in a location producing 3D crystals where you need to move through volume very quickly, then it makes sense to invest in a 3D camera. And by the way, the 3D camera, even after it takes the scan, still needs a software to edit that scan. And so that Cockpit 3D is used for um, editing the 3D scan. So Cockpit 3D software is used whether you've got someone giving you a photo or whether you're taking a scan with the 3D camera, all right? However, um, the 3D camera will only achieve 3D data if there is a physical subject person standing in front of it. Uh, and this is very important because some of those questions that you're asking, I used to get it. I remember when I was at the shows and they would ask, you know, um, can you take this photograph and hold it up in front of your camera and convert it to 3D? And like a hard copy. A hard copy. Actually. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like the photos that are behind you there, right? So you just grab one of those hard copy photos or Polaroids or whatever it is and you hold it in front of a camera. And can you make it 3D? And that's not how a 3D camera works. A 3D camera really needs to map out the face that's in front of it. So when someone is there, a tourist location is perfect for something like that because they are on vacation with their family or their honeymooning or the people that they wanted in that memory, a souvenir keepsake are physically there. So in those scenarios, tourist locations are ideal for having a 3D camera. But outside of tourist locations, remember tourist locations are generally corporate, right? So, um, and, and most laser operators um, are not owning a huge tourist venue. They are entrepreneurs and they are starting their business, running it in malls or, um, you know, selling in festivals, fairs, shows. And so for them, a 3D camera is not ideal because most of their customers are going to want to purchase a 3D crystal, not necessarily for themselves, but as gifts for other people. And because you're getting it as a gift for someone else, you're not going to bring that person to a location to get 3D scanned. You're going to hop onto that person's Facebook, or perhaps you've got images of them on your phone, um, and you're going to take that image and provide it. Uh, the customer is going to provide it to the laser operator. Say, here's the photo I want to make 3D. And that's where the power of cockpit 3D really comes in, because that's where we've got 200 plus 3D artists that are on standby. Um, and they're essentially working for the laser operators. Um, and uh, the laser operator uploads the photo. So they, they take the order wherever it is, and they upload that photo. The artist retrieves it, they claim it, they start doing the modeling, and then they submit the 3D file back to the server where then the laser operator is able to download wherever in the world they are. We operate 24-7, 365. So then they're downloading the, um, the 3D file that's being modeled, and then they're using Cockpit 3D to template it, to um, HD it, to Facebook broadcast it, um, to um, save it, and then, of course, laser burn it uh, as well. So that's, that's really the main difference. Sorry, that was kind of a, a long-winded answer, but I think that it, it really gives an in-depth explanation to, to the difference between the 3D camera and um, getting 3D from a photo. Well, let, let, me, let me summarize then, if I, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the common denominator is cockpit 3D. It, it, it's in the mix, no matter what, to facilitate the optimization, the conversion, you know, to get the HD 3D results. 
The differences are then in the the buying experience. The tourist location is for the moment, on the spot. I want it now. Speed. My flight's in two hours. I'm going to go have a drink, and I'm going to come back and get the order. Versus the let's call it the premeditated planned gift. I know the anniversary, the 50th, 50th anniversary is next month. I'm planning for this. I don't need it right now. That's the other scenario where I don't need it quickly. So I don't need the 3D camera necessarily, but Cockpit 3D is definitely the common denominator. Is that, yes. is that a, fair, a fair summary then? Yeah, absolutely. And people do ask, you know, um, can I use Cockpit 3D or the 3D camera um, with the same laser? Or does, you know, the camera belong to one sort of a laser and the conversion belong to another? And um, the beauty is that the cameras um, that we offer uh, and of course, our main focus, the Cockpit 3D software for photo conversions can be used with the single laser that you're buying, uh, whether it's a 3D laser box uh, or any other laser that you decide to purchase from the marketplace, it'll work with any of the lasers that you have. And in fact, we even provide, um, you know, sample files um, so that it can be tested. So everybody, you know, like us, comments, give us new ideas for other broadcasts that we can do. No topics of interest. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, please visit us again. Thank you.